Now, Christmas is a little over three weeks away, but in many places you wouldn't really know it, would you? Sure, there's some tinsel hanging around and obviously a fat bearded guy in a red suit's often on display, but not much about the real meaning of Christmas is evident. And I want to remind you all, it's a religious and cultural celebration that commemorates the birth of Christ. Now, that clearly rankles some people, so they take the Christ out and they put the X in instead. That's all done in the name of equality, of secularisation, and of course, making sure that no one is offended. Except some people are actually offended by the subtle and sometimes not so subtle assaults in our culture. And as you'd expect, they've been in touch with me. So it's time to address those concerns and joining me is Rebecca Wieser from The Spectator Australia. Welcome, Rebecca. Can I say Merry Christmas to you too, or is that going to offend you? Because I don't want to start off offending you. No, no, it's wonderful, isn't it, to finally be here. It's been such a long and difficult year for everyone. So I'm delighted to receive your greetings and also to the viewers to say Merry Christmas. And it's, of course, Hanukkah at the moment, so Happy Hanukkah to any Jewish viewers. And it's the Sabbath, so Shabbat Shalom. Uh, it's a wonderful time. And, uh, and I think it, for people of faith, Faith has been so important to get through really what's been a very trying two years. So I think it's this something to celebrate for all of us. Yeah, that's a really important point, actually, Rebecca, that, that in trying times, people look for something that's going to give them strength or guidance. And often they turn to uh, religious belief and faith. And even people who aren't notably religious, actually, might say a prayer and think, you know, you get me out of this one, God, and maybe I'll pay more attention to you later on. So, which sort of suggests to me there's something in all of our spirit that said there's a greater being than ourselves and we just ignore it. But I've got to go on to some viewer stuff. Andrew has written to me, he says, this is still a Christian country with traditions linked to the Christian faith, including Christmas. We don't need to dampen down our culture and traditions to respect other traditions. Rebecca, is he right? Are we a Christian country or are we a secular country with Christian traditions and why should they triumph over other traditions, for example, or newer ones? Well, there's absolutely no doubt that um, Christianity is the dominant religion uh, in Australia. The census shows us that. And uh, our traditions come out of the great Judeo-Christian traditions. So understanding Christianity, uh, understanding the Bible is really fundamental to, to understanding the foundations of our civilization, of our institutions, of our freedoms, uh, our democracy. So uh, it's, it's incontestable that Christianity has been under assault here in the West, even more so in other parts of the world. I mean, spare a thought for parts of the world where Christians are facing, you know, churches get bombed and, and Christians face terrible persecution in, in countries in the Middle East yep. and, and elsewhere. So, um, and, but, but and you know, it Rebecca, was to some the, extent ever th thus. Yeah, well, one of the things that gets me right is the equality brigade is how everyone's equal and we don't like the patriarchy and we don't like that. One of the essential messages of Jesus was do unto others as you want them to do unto you. It, essentially, you know, we all should treat each other the same. And yet the equality brigade hate that and they would prefer other religions or other beliefs that actually do segregate society or treat people at, at different tiers in a different way or indeed socialism, which... Um, has one rule for the elites and one for the rest of the world. So I don't get it. What have, what have I missed here? Well, I think there, there is genuinely a war on faith and, and there is, because faith is so powerful. I mean, we see this in communist China, the attempts to eliminate um, faith or to subvert it and to try and bend it. Because when you realise that there is a force greater than you, that there is something that you have to answer to, that there is a life beyond this life, it gives people enormous courage 
and uh, and an understanding of what is right and wrong and to and to change things that are wrong and to fight against them and of course mm. if you're a godless communist that's the last thing you want so uh, we see it not just in communist china but certainly in the west as well there there are a lot of people but what happens to these people when they take away religious faith they either get faced with an enormous void and so a, a, a lack of meaning and and a terrible emptiness or which they then rush to fill up with all sorts of other sort of religions or, or, or cult-like beliefs that they make up on mm. the go to fill the void that's yeah, you're quite right. And your term, godless communist, I think is got to be a 22 phrase of the year. I'm going to repeat that every single week. <laughs> Beth has written in and she says, let's normalise playing some of the Christian hymns with the other Christmas songs. They're relevant to the holiday and very catchy. Well, i got to say, I like the upbeat sort of, um, you know, Mariah Carey stuff and the Boney M Christmas songs. Even Bruce Springsteen is a terrible lefty. But you don't actually hear those Christmas hymns like Silent Night, Holy Night anymore, the more traditional ones, do you? It's all sort of pop ballads, uh, Christmas songs. Well, you do if you go to church. Um, and oh, course, uh, yeah. so uh, I go to Christchurch St Lawrence. They have a wonderful choir. And uh, they're also putting on the Messiah, which I find incredibly uplifting. And... Uh, so I think it, that is really the place to hear it in, in the environment and, and to sing, obviously, the family, if you're lucky enough to have a piano player to stand around the piano. But, but Beth, I'm with you. I love those other songs as well. One of my favourites is Feliz Navidad, um, oh, which yeah. is uh, there's a version of it sung by um, a Canadian group where they all play one guitar and it's it's hilarious and it always puts me in the Christmas spirit as well. Well, I'm two weeks into learning the guitar, so I'll see what I can achieve in the next four weeks before three <laughs> weeks before Christmas. <laughs> anyway, hey, Lachlan's <laughs> written in quickly and he says, uh, why don't we promote peace and happiness among the human race rather than continuously feel that any normal human feels a necessity to agree on religion and lifestyle. Personally, I love the many differences within every culture. It proves the human brain has the potential to expand far beyond our current reality, stop the warmongering, promote the human race as a species with so much more potential. Rebecca, I've only got a minute, but what struck me about this email was the fact that different cultures does show the, the infinite ability of the human brain to develop and adapt and, and atone. And some are better than others. We can make that judgment ourselves. But... It is really quite fascinating when you think about it like that, isn't it? Yes, it is. And really, one of the many messages of, of Christmas is that message of, I bring, for unto us a son is born, and I bring peace to all men of goodwill, and, and women, of course, <laughs> was included in that. Um, so that's absolutely right. It, it really is fundamental to the season of Christmas, along with the notion of humility. I mean, Christ was born into a manger, you know, the simplicity of it. You know, so many people focus on the gifts. That's actually for the 12th day, for the visit of the Magi, uh, but we bring it all together. But there are so many wonderful messages for people in Christmas and I really do hope that everybody can have a wonderful whatever their religion is that it can be a time of peace and happiness and coming together with your family and friends um, because we really do need to come together there's been terrible efforts to divide the country in terribly unfair ways and and now is a time to to come together and to share that message of peace and love. Beautifully said, Rebecca Weiser. Thank you so much and great work on The Spectator Australia and we look forward to having you back on Bernardi in 2022. Enjoy the break. My pleasure.